All right, all you really need to know about finding the inverse of the function is one simple thing. Now, I know this might seem an elementary problem, but don't worry, stay with me, because in this video, I will go over a more difficult example that's gonna kind of bring this concept home. Now, when we're dealing with functions, and especially finding the inverse of that function, a lot of times we don't want to deal with the f of x notation. What we simply wanna do is rewrite this as a linear equation. It just makes the math a little bit easier for us to understand as well as digest and work with. Okay, so to get to what you really need to understand, we need to go ahead and graph the function, now turned equation, y equals 2x plus one. All right, so hopefully you're with me here. You got an understanding of what this graph is gonna look like. I had the y-intercept of one, and then I followed the slope two over one. I went up and I went down just so we can kind of see exactly the shape of this graph. Now, when we're first learning about identifying the inverse of the function, one thing we do is we talk about the symmetry between a function and its inverse. And that symmetry is going to be about the y equals x axis. So if we were going to take this graph Right? and we are going to find the inverse of that, what we would simply do is reflect it about that y equals x line. Now, I've been a teacher for 14 years, and whenever we get to trying to find symmetry with the inverse function and trying to reflect about the y equals x line, students get pretty confused, right? Because it's not like it's the y-axis or the x-axis and we're simply flipping. It gets a little bit more confusing to say, to try to like flip something across a diagonal. So there's one simple thing that I think brings home everything we need to understand graphically as well as algebraically. And that is that idea. If we are going to reflect about this y equals x line, all we simply need to do is swap the x and the y coordinates. See, in this graph, we have a coordinate point where we actually have a couple coordinate points. I'll deal with these two coordinate points right here. So I have one coordinate point, one comma three, and then I'm gonna use this coordinate point here of zero comma one. Okay, so if I simply need to go ahead and find the inverse of this graph, all I simply need to do then is just swap my x and y coordinates. So therefore, instead of one comma three, I'm now gonna use three comma one, and instead of zero comma one, I'm going to use now one comma zero. Now, why am I only using two points? Because we only need two points, ladies and gentlemen, to graph a line, right? I kind of went a little bit over and above just to you know, grab this third point here. But this third point is actually important because what you'll notice here is this point is actually on that y equals x line. So that's actually going to give us a point where these two lines or these two, the function and its inverse are going to intersect. But anyways, so we have one comma zero, that's going to be right here. And if I did three comma one, I'd be one, two, three, up one. Now, by graphing these, you can say, oh, yeah, you know what, that does look like a pretty good symmetry. I know my graph's not perfectly correct, but I want you to understand that relationship of swapping the x and the y's to be able to get your graph. Because the reason why I say that's the, the all you simply need to know is because if I wanted to find the equation of the inverse, all I simply need to do algebraically is swap the x and the y's. That's why we like using the x and y rather than the f of x notation. So if I have the equation y equals 2x plus one, and I wanna find, well, what is the equation of this line, right? Now, obviously we have the points, we could probably write an equation, but let's go ahead and do this algebraically. Swap the x and y's, and now simply just go ahead and solve for, solve for, solve for y. Okay. So I went ahead and did a couple steps here. I swapped the y over to the left-hand side because that's how we want to write the equation. And then I distributed this two into both of these terms. But rather than writing one x over two, I said, no, we don't really write those equations like that. We write it as a one half x and then minus a one half. And then you can see, then I use the inverse notation because if this is our function, f of x, well, we need to make sure that we're when we're representing the inverse, we're using the inverse notation. Now, I told you at the beginning of this video, this is all grand. This is what you need to know. This is why typically when we're first instructing about finding the inverse of an equation, we start with something linear. We start with something basic, right? But if all you need to know about is to find the inverse of a function, you swap the x and the y's, this is critically important because now let's go and work through a problem that would be way more difficult something that students would make mistakes on. But if we remember the swapping the x and the y's, that will be our key to understanding what the inverse of this function is going to be. All right, so now we have f of x equals the square root of 2x plus one. 
Now again, we're gonna follow the same process, right? We're gonna swap this with y, replace that with a y, and then we're gonna swap the x and the y's, right? Because that's the one thing we need to know. And then, now we just need to solve for y. Our inverse operations are a little bit more difficult here, right? It's not just like subtracting and dividing. Now what we need to do is simply undo the square root, which is going to be a squaring of both sides. And now we can get to the subtract one, divide by two. Okay, so I kind of skipped over a couple through steps because I want to get to the meat of what I'm trying to talk about here, or at least what I'm trying to instruct. And so when I divide by two, remember the two can divide into both of those terms. X squared divided by two can just be written as one half X, right? I already kind of did over here. And then we have uh, minus one half. Here's the point that I want to bring to you, which actually I forgot to kind of show. So I'm going to have to do some erasing. Now, the reason why I needed some more room, because I need to show you graphically what happens, because nine times out of 10, maybe nine times out of 10 when you're first learning this and then the swapping the X and the Y hasn't resonated, students will leave this as their final answer. And this is a incorrect answer. So to understand why this is incorrect, let's go back to the original graph and kind of understand, well, what does this graph actually look like? Now, we could go ahead and graph this using transformations, but what I'm gonna do is just do something a little bit different here. I am going to actually just use a couple points. Um, let's go ahead and use zero, so when x equals zero. So if I did a table, x, y, or f of x, and if I plug in zero, two times zero is zero, zero plus one is one, square root of one is going to be a one. So zero, one. Then I would have, let's see, let's pick another point. Why don't we pick, not one, why about we pick four? When I plug four in for there, two times four is going to be eight. Eight plus one is going to be a nine. The square root of nine is going to be a three. So if I did one, two, three, four, and then this would be a, a three. So one, two, three. Okay, and this graph is gonna look like that. If you wanna see when this would actually go ahead and be zero, it'd be a negative one half if you are curious on that. But anyways, let's go ahead and that'd be part of the transformation part of it, but I wanna focus on this. The graph is gonna look something like this. You can see these two points satisfy this graph. That's what we're looking for, right? Well, what about F inverse X of one half X squared minus one half? What does that look like? Now, again, just using a basic graph understanding. In this case, I will use a little bit of transformations because for this graph, it's gonna be relatively simple. We're gonna go down one half, right? And then we have one half X, which is going to be a vertical compression. And the graph is gonna look something like this. We don't actually don't need to be that particular here because I want you to see something. And it's something very, very important. Does this graph look like it is that graph just reflected about the Y equals X line? Like if you take this graph, and flip it about the y equals x line, are you gonna get this? No, heck no. So what did we do wrong? Well, in the fact, we didn't actually didn't do anything wrong. We just needed to understand and remember the main thing I was talking about with this video. Remember, you're going to swap the variables. Four comma three is now gonna be swapped to a three comma four. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. That is graph. The point is going to be on this graph. If you remember the symmetry of quadratic equations, over here would be a negative three comma four. This portion of the graph is not part of this inverse function. So what that means is algebraically, we didn't do anything wrong, but what we simply need to do is going to add a restriction. And I'm hoping this is going to show up still on the video. I'll try to do my double check, but F inverse of X is the going to be the inverse of this function of one half X squared minus one half. However, it's only going to be when X is greater than or equal to zero. And I can't really see, so I'm not even sure if it's showing up there. So I'm just going to write it one more time. Okay, so what that means is if we now go ahead and say we are not gonna include when x is less than zero and we erase this, does this now look like that is symmetrical? And yes, if you take this graph and flip it about there, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to get exactly what we're looking for. So just remember, when you're thinking about identifying the inverse from a function, swap the x and the y. It's helpful graphically as well as helpful algebraically.